Hey guys, rainy day in Japan, probably a good day to go for a bit of a wander around the home centre. Stop first and buy ourselves a witch's broom. You never have enough witch's brooms in your life. We've showed you those before, quite popular in Japan. You'll see people standing next to a $200,000 road fixing machine leaning on a witch's broom like that. So they still use them, really, really popular those bamboo brooms. Variety of agricultural machines there for tilling soil and so on. This is sort of the farmer's corner of the home centre. Market garden type farmers. Some small dodgy plastic electric lawn mowers. <laughs> You'll recognise some of this stuff. We showed you some of this stuff on previous videos. The lawn mowers. The little electric lawn mowers are funny. Yeah, just spotted this over here. Have a look at this. That's reverse cycle air conditioner. So it's got the compressor for outside and the air conditioning unit for inside. So it's the whole system for about $400. It's pretty cheap. The bigger one's there for $500, $600. And you just have to pay for installation. So that's pretty good. Not bad. So again, this is the farmer's part of the place. This is sort of semi-rural area, this area. So a fair bit of farming type stuff, pumps and hand tools. That's the security guard there, guys. Security guard spends his day collecting trolleys and empty baskets from the car park and bringing them back inside. Oh, this again, this is for farmers. This is the stuff that scares away the crows. So if you've got trouble with crows eating your rice, these are the things you can use. One's a very loud cap gun. How's that? Go out in the rice field and fire that at the crows. Scare the crows away with the big cap gun. Inflatable face. So if you're making a scarecrow, you buy this thing to give the scarecrow a face. And then big black birds there. So big black birds. What scares a crow away? A bigger black crow, right? All farming stuff. Oh, it's some more scare the, scare the crows away stuff. How's that? Big owl. Clothes, workman clothes. Boots, look at the, the rain boots are really popular. People, if they're washing their car or going out in the garden, helmets, helmets guys, helmets. But anyone, anyone doing anything outside, probably the most popular shoes are rain boots. 
those are the ninja ninja shoes we showed you them before popular with the workmen so rubber soles and cloth sides tubby basically tubby old style japanese tubby which is amazing for workmen to wear isn't it because nail would come straight through the sole and anything heavy would drop on the toes would break the toe because there's zero protection a million gloves because you can't do any sort of work in japan without wearing gloves because that would be uncivilized wouldn't it everyone wears gloves hard grip <laughs> that's handy yeah everyone wears gloves any sort of physical labor at all everyone wears gloves so there's a whole variety of gloves there <laughs> the wall of gloves men and women and there's the rain boots yeah the rain boots anything at all outside so walking around the garden or or washing the car or anything at all outside like that rain boots is the the shoe of choice usually glasses so spectacles like corrective eye eyewear and sunglasses pretty cheap you know like ten dollars a pair sort of thing a lot of people who come to japan are really surprised at the cost of things everything lots of things in japan are really really cheap obviously with a big population japan has good buying power but it's just the state of japan's economy at the moment things are really cheap that tent thing there's $130 those things are really popular on the beach and barbecues and in the park and that sort of thing so that music that's playing is to put you in the in the summer m mood so this corner is selling fireworks and things all the barbecue type stuff and fireworks type stuff so they've got the the festival type music playing to put you in the summery mood bunch of fireworks there not too many there yet there's a guy there with boxes and boxes of them putting them on the shelves and they've got the magic cones of safety there to keep us from going in there while he's making it, putting the shelves up cash registers there on the right so they've got normal cash registers that you go through and they've also got the self-serve ca cash register where you go through and you swipe everything yourself and pay with your credit card so you don't actually deal with a person sorry about the wobbling guys the floor in this place is really uneven so the it wobbles very uneven floor Alcohol corner, cold beer, sake, look at the big bottles of sake, yahoo, four litre bottles, three litre bottles, two litre bottles, <laughs> industrial size sake bottles. Yahoo, two and a half litres, is it, that one? And again, talking about cheap stuff in Japan, have a look at this. The alcohol's ridiculous. The tax on alcohol is really low. So a bottle of bourbon or whiskey that you might pay $50 for in another country, you, you might pay $20 for here. There's whiskey up on the shelf, there's $9. Here's a four-litre bottle of Santori. 
can't remember how much that one is. It might be about fifty dollars for four liters of Suntory whiskey. Really cheap. Alcohol's really cheap, and you can get all your brands, all your imported brands as well. So bottles of bottle of Jack Daniels, seven hundred fifty ml Jack Daniels would be about twenty dollars. There's um, Johnny Walker Red Label there. It's ridiculous. And again, it's because the tax on alcohol is really low. Beer. Cartons and cartons of beer. Oh, hey, clear latte. Coffee. Uh. That's rice, those big bags. Oh, slippers. So, of course, this is the land of slippers, right? Everybody has lots of slippers lined up inside the front door of their house. So, a range of slippers. Adult size and kid size. Slippers are cheap. People normally keep them for a while and then after they... They sort of wash them a couple of times and then throw them away. It's always good to have nice, clean, new slippers in your house. Because, you know, that's what you're giving people to wear when they come and visit. So we're getting down towards the pet section. Cats and dogs. We always get people when we make videos like this, there's always people who go, oh, surprised at how much English there is. Yeah, sort of thing. Some of it's English and some of it's Japanglish. If you look at it, some of it's, it's it's like birds and small animals, that's fair enough. But if you keep looking, you'll see stuff that's pretty odd. It's not about communicating. It's not there for foreigners. It's not there to help the foreigners out. There's no important information in English. All the important information is in Japanese. Of course, of course, this is Japan, so the language is Japanese. So all the important information is in Japanese. You know, if you want to try and find an aisle to try and find some particular thing, it's all in Japanese. There's nothing in English that will help you there. The English that you see, or the Romanji that you see, the Roman writing that you see, is purely decoration. And anything that is sort of half important, like where it says, you know, pet corner or cats and dogs there, usually there'll be another sign nearby that says the same thing in Japanese. So it's not there for the foreigners, it's not there to make it easier for us. If you look at the aisles, when we go up aisles, if you look at the labels on the aisles, there's nothing there in English. It's all in Japanese. Uh, strollers for pets, guys. We showed you a couple of pets recently in, in strollers, including a duck, remember? There's strollers specifically for pets. Surely any animal that has to be wheeled around in a stroller probably doesn't deserve to be fed, does it? Surely. <laughs> What sort of pet's that? <laughs> Buy a dog and wheel it around in a baby baby stroller. Oh yeah, these are... Uh, some people call these rhinoceros beetles. They're really popular. It's interesting, a lot of Japanese people, or most Japanese people, are sort of scared of insects and will freak out if an insect, if an insect crawls across the table or something. But some insects are popular here and rhinoceros beetles are really popular so that's a live one so the kids will buy them or the parents will buy them in these boxes and they come with little containers of sort of jelly that, that they eat and the kids will take them home and that's their pet you know usually kept in the genkan of the house so that it's away from the rest of the house a bit But see the aisles, the, the names of the aisles, or the signs saying what's in the aisles, all in Japanese, of course. And again, whenever we say that, there's always someone that goes, of course, why should they have it in English? We're not saying that. We're not saying that at all. It's Japan, the language is Japanese. What we're pointing out is that usually useful information is not in English, and that usually the English that you see is purely decorative 
least just to look cool. Oh, there's sofas. Where's the sofa aisle? Cushions. Cushions, see? Pe a lot of people still have tatami floors, so cushion is the seat. So cushions are popular and on the right-hand side there. And on the left-hand side, these sofas. So some of these sofas have little legs on them. Some of these sofas have no legs on them. And the sofas and the, and the armchairs that have no legs, they're designed for tatami floor because you can't put furniture with legs on a tatami floor it'll destroy it so those sofas there on the left hand side those chairs are for tatami floor so you sit them directly on the floor and then you can sit on the chair Well, there's some interesting floor coverings here. They're designed, they're just basically mats, but they're designed to look like tatami. So you can put these down on a wooden floor somewhere or you can put them anywhere, of course, but they're also often used in tatami rooms to protect the tatami itself. So it's sort of like similar material to what the tatami are wrapped in or covered in. And you can just put that down on the floor and then put something else on top so it looks same as as the tatami around it but the difference is if it gets damaged or something spilt on it you can just wash it or throw it away and put another one down because they're not real expensive again stuff like that in japan is really cheap it's amazing it's amazing how cheap some of that sort of stuff is and here's sort of a hard version of that so that one we just looked at was just like a matte soft matte these ones are a little bit more substantial. So you could cover a room in this. The end result would be it would look like a tatami floor, but in actual fact, it's just that thin mat. Oh, fake grass. <laughs> this stuff is popular because most people have tiny outside areas around their houses and quite often they'll just put that stuff down around around the outside of their house so it sort of looks a bit green but in actual fact it's just plastic new item see no, it's not useful information is it it's just decoration new item You'd hope in a shop like this it'd all be new items, wouldn't you? <laughs> You'd hope they'd not be selling old items, but anyway. Toilies, guys. Here's the electric toilies. So what do we got there? It's about sixteen hundred dollars. One of those toilets, sixteen hundred. There's another one there. It's two thousand three hundred for the electric wash you wash you and dry you toilet. <laughs> And these are just for the tops. If you've got a good toilet base, there's just the tops there you can buy as well. So a person who really, really loved the Japanese toilet could buy one and take it back to their own country if they wanted to. That's uh, Navi systems and 
calculators and small electronics clocks hey look guys look carefully here you'll see your toily signs and the no smoking signs that we, we give away in the giveaway there they are suitcases walking sticks for power walking oh this is uh, emergency stuff so you keep this stuff in your house in case there's an earthquake or some other emergency where you need a, an emergency kit so those first aid kits and things this is a funny one look at this one it's got all the stuff that you're going to need in an emergency and what are you going to need if there's an earthquake or your house falls down of course you're going to need a spare pair of slippers aren't you emergency slippers <laughs> Because Japanese style would be to put down a big piece of plastic somewhere and you'd have to have a pair of slippers to be able to take your shoes off and put your slippers on. Very important. <laughs> Can't have an emergency set that doesn't include slippers. Oh, so these are emergency ration packs or food packs. So again, these are foods that will last for long periods of time. You can buy these and keep them stored up in your house. And of course, this is all serious stuff. People do this, of course, because, you know, earthquakes and losing power and water and total devastation is possible at any minute, particularly central Japan. Central Japan's overdue for a really, really serious big earthquake, so... All that emergency stuff, having a emergency stuff on hand is actually quite a serious thing, quite important. People keep stores of fresh water, bottles of water and food and city councils do, cities do as well, have big warehouses full of emergency ration packs and drinking water and stuff. Power tools, pretty cheap, $50, $50 for a battery drill. Look guys, magic plastic cones. <laughs> Those of you who know that video, the magic plastic cones. And also this is where they keep the magic plastic chain as well. Very popular, all that stuff. Marking out your little space. People often buy those cones to put in their, outside their house to stop people turning their car around on their driveway or something because space is such an issue here people do get a bit protective about it so most of the wood here most of the timber here is is softwood plantation pine pretty cheap pretty small pretty thin it's the nature of the construction here too when they make things they make it out of the thinnest as cheapest softwood possible as we've showed you before a lot of stuff that's made here isn't made to last it's made to look good for a couple of years and then get pulled apart and replaced with something new well you can use these for separating the, the chaff from the rice or husk from the rice toss it up and down in one of those the husk all blows away so again we're back in the farmer's corner so those big bags there are for filling with rice they put them in the back of the little k trucks and then pump the rice into them from the harvesters 
So we're actually about to walk past the register. There's no one actually at the register at the moment. Walk past the register and out the door. And again, no security from here to the car. So whatever you want to take in your trolley. Of course, people don't. The point is just isn't it refreshing that, you know, live in a place where entrances and exits are so open. It's nice, isn't it? Anyway, that was our tour. Hope you enjoyed that. More videos coming soon.